What's up my friends, welcome back! In the past videos we built the radio control transmitter and the airplane body. It's now time to build the most important part of this project, which is the receiver that we have inside the airplane. We have to create our flight controller board with all the sensors and the radio receiver as well and control all the motors of the plane. We will use two Arduino Nano. One will be the flight controller. It will receive data from an inertial movement unit or so-called IMU. It will also receive a PPM signal from the second Arduino. This second Arduino will be our radio receiver. Because the flight controller Arduino will be already busy enough with the PID mathematics and control code, it is better to use a separate Arduino to receive the radio signal and send that signal using PPN between the two Arduinos. Finally, we'll connect the flight controller to a 20 amps electronic speed controller and four servos. The speed controller spins a 22 mm brushless motor and the four servers will move the four airplanes controllers, which are the rudder, elevator and the two wings controllers. Let's first take a look at the radio receiver schematic. Remember that all the schematics, codes, links and examples are in the description. The connections are the same as in the transmitter. Connect the NRF module as shown in this schematic. Add a 3.3 voltage regulator between the LiPo battery and the module. I've made a separate PCB for the receiver, where I've placed all in one the Arduino, the NRF module and the 3.3 voltage regulator circuit and soldered some female pins to all the outputs. In this way I can separately connect it to the flight controller, like you would do with a normal radio receiver and you could also use this receiver in another project if you want. Now we have to program this Arduino to receive the signals from the radio control transmitter and send the received values using PPM signal. This is the code that we are going to upload. The structure is almost the same as in the transmitter part. As always we include the libraries. Here we define the PPM configuration. I want to send the 4 channels that I receive. I will use pin 2 from the Arduino as the PPM output. Here, as in the transmitter code, we create the pipe in with the same code as in the transmitter. We create once again the structures with the 4 bytes, throttle, yaw, pitch and roll. The reset function we set the data to the startup values. As you can see, the startup value for the throttle is 0, because the throttle joystick must be always in the low position when startup. We create our PPM values from the received data. We receive values between 0 and 255 because we use 8 bit packs of data. But I need to send values from 1000 to 2000 because the flight controller requires that range of data. We will see why later. Now we have to set up the internal register for the PPM signal. Now in the setup void we first create the values using the reset data function before. Next we set up the PPM and begin the radio communication. This function receives the data using the radio.read function. Now in the infinite void loop we always check if the connection is lost. If more than a second passed since the connection was lost, we set the receive data to the setup values. In this way, if the connection is lost, the airplane will fall to the ground instead of flying away without control. Now this is important. Make sure what kind of Arduino you are using and set this value to 1 if you use an 8 MHz Arduino or 2 for a 16 MHz one. Delete the arrow line after you set the value. Now upload the code to the receiver Arduino. Ok, so now we have our radio receiver that will give us a PPM signal with the 4 received values using digital PIM2 from the Arduino. Let's now take a look at the flight controller schematic. The connection is very easy. As an inertial movement unit we will use the MPU1615 module, which cost around 2 euros. Connect the I2C pins, clock and data to analog pins A4 and A5 of the Arduino as shown in this schematic. Supply 5 volts and ground to the module. We have to share ground and the PPM pin between digital pin 2 of the receiver and digital pin 2 of the flight controller. 
Now we have to connect the outputs of the four servo controls and the electronic speed controller. This is a full schematic of the entire circuit. So we connect the receiver PPM pin to digital pin 2 of the flight controller. We supply 11.1 volts from the LiPo battery directly to the electronic speed controller and the voltage in of the two Arduinos. Also supply 5 volts from the electronic speed controller BEC to the four servers and connect the four signals as shown in this schematic. Almost all the electronic speed controllers have an integrated 5 volts BEC. Solder the brushless motor to the electronic speed controller and we are done. Once you finish with the connections, it's time to program the flight controller. We will use a platform called MultiWii. This platform can adapt to all kinds of quadcopters and airplanes. First, go to the video description and download the MultiWii zip file. In this zip, you will find the MultiWii platform and the source code. The MultiWii platform uses Java and sometimes that could give you problems. So make sure that your Java is updated. You could also buy this MultiWii flight controller, which basically is the same thing that we've done with Arduino and the MPU1650 module. As you can see in this example, the MultiWii works pretty well, and you are able to see in real time the movements, acceleration and gyros of your plane. We'll do the same with our Arduino-based flight controller. You could always add more sensor to your flight controller, such as a pressure sensor, magnetometer or GPS. Unzip the downloaded zip file and open Arduino IDE. Open the MultiWii source code by double clicking on the MultiWii.ino. This will open a lot of libraries. We go to the config.h. Here we can set up all the configuration of our flying machine. By uncommenting the setups, we activate them. In the type of multicopter, uncomment the airplane configuration. Depending of the electronic speed control that you use, change the min throttle and max throttle. In my case, min throttle is 1150 and maximum is 2000. The minimum command is 1000. This is why I told you before that we need signals between 1000 and 2000, so we had to map the signals from 0 to 255. Now we scroll down to select the inertial measurement unit. Uncomment the GI521 that includes the MPU6015 module. Now press Ctrl F to open the Find tab and type PPM. Here in the PPM sum receiver, we have to define our receiver configuration. We define a new serial sum. We know that our receiver will first send the throttle data, the yaw, pitch and finally roll. So we type those values in this order and add the auxiliary values. I'll give a name to this configuration and I will compile the project. Now we are ready to upload the code. Connect the flight controller that we've made to the PC and upload this code. Now open the MultiWii platform. Here we select the flight controller come and click start. Now if you move your flight controller you can observe the data in real time. Connect the receiver PPM pin to the flight controller and start up the radio controller transmitter. Now you can see that we received the data for all the controls. This configuration is ready to go. Put all the electronics inside the plane. I've glued my accelerometer to the pilot part so it won't move around. Connect the electronic speed controller and the four servos and the LiPo battery as well and the plane is ready to go. As you can see, the controls move when I move the plane. This will ensure a steady and straight flight. To activate the motor, just put throttle to low and roll to maximum for a few seconds. A LED will turn on when activated. When I increase the throttle, the brushless motor will start rotating. I use a 4510 double propeller for this plane and it has a lot of throttle. If you have any question, just ask them in the comment section below or on my Q&A page. I hope you like this video. In the next videos we will see the flight test. But for that I first have to find an open space park or get out of the big city. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel to motivate me for more videos like this one. See you later guys.